I've worn my Vea Esplars over 120 times, and I can honestly say I've got some pretty unpopular opinions. Let's talk about it. Today's video is an honest review of the Vea Esplars and my experience wearing them. We'll talk about comfort, durability, and everything you need to know if you're thinking about buying a pair. Hi, I'm McKay. I make videos about minimalism, fashion education, and finding your style as a normal person. Vea's absolutely took the world by storm. From royals to influencers to everyday commuters, they are absolutely everywhere. I see them every day all over my office and on my commute, and they're just getting more and more popular still. Over the past couple of years, I've worn these shoes at least 120 times. I got these shoes before I started tracking my wardrobe, so I would say 120 is a conservative estimate, but needless to say, I have worn these shoes a lot. As far as the appearance goes, I do remember being drawn to the design. They're simple, they're elegant. The aesthetic is just perfect for me. I've never been into chunky shoes. I didn't get into the Air Force Ones and I was really excited to see this very simple, slim profile coming back. They're basic enough to be versatile and match absolutely everything while still feeling very feminine and light. I'd say the Esplars have the most subtle branding with the white stitching. That's something that I was personally very drawn to. I like that they were very understated. It wasn't overly recognizable and I didn't think that I was going to get tired of them because of that. But if that's not your thing, there are plenty of other colorways. Let's get into how they've held up. The leather has maintained its shape really well and there isn't any creasing. They're honestly in great condition for how much I've worn them. And a bonus is that they're very easy to clean. The only thing that's starting to come undone is the stitching on the back of the suede which really isn't too big of a deal, but other than that, they look absolutely amazing. For the sizing, I took a size eight or a 39, which is my normal size. I know that a lot of people say that they run pretty large into size down. So I do remember trying on a couple of different sizes and actually being pretty surprised that I did take away my regular size. It is worth mentioning that I think they still only sell whole sizes. So it might be worth still trying on a couple of sizes if you're able to, especially if you're between sizes. And this is where a lot of people aren't going to like what I have to say, but I feel like somebody needs to say it. So let's get into the cons. One of the main reasons I wanted these shoes so much, especially for the $150 price tag, is that so many girlies were talking about how comfortable they are, that they were wearing them all day and on these long trips, and I just don't see how. I've had these for over two years, and my number one complaint is that they are very stiff. So the leather is very stiff and the sole is stiff as well. If you look at me gently pressing, there really isn't much give. I can really force them to go a bit further, but they just naturally don't want to bend. Because there isn't much flex, they end up really limiting my movement as I walk because my foot isn't able to bend to the degree that I would like it to. The leather is very stiff as well and just didn't mold to my foot. I didn't have an issue breaking them in. I know a lot of people have talked about the tongue digging in and getting blisters that they can be pretty uncomfortable to break in. That wasn't an issue for me. They just never really became comfortable. What more is there to say? Actually, I have a lot more to say. The sole is pretty stiff as well. It's not that rubbery material that I would typically think of with sneakers, something that is really soft and absorbs shock. These are not like that. This is a very unique sole. I can feel every rock and you're gonna hear me coming from a mile away because they are pretty loud. Again, there is nothing to absorb that shock and there really isn't any cushion there. So you're gonna feel it all. There isn't much tread and because there isn't any cushion, you can clearly see the way that my footprint and my individual toes have worn in these shoes. There is just nothing to absorb that. Probably not a surprise at this point, but the insole isn't cushioned. It's really just a flat and hard insole. Even the shoelaces are stiff. I remember when I tried these on way, way back in person that even the sales associate was complaining about how much they hated Vea's because they didn't like having to lace the shoes. Granted, this was not the best SA, but they definitely had a full body workout just trying to get them laced up for me. Overall, the shoe just stayed very stiff for me. It never loosened up. I've seen some reviews saying that all leather is stiff. It's always going to be a bit rigid and that it can never be as comfortable as canvas, and that's just not true. I'll get into that in a couple minutes. The last thing that is worth mentioning is that they're not breathable. So this is going to come down to preference and how sweaty your feet are. This is something that I've noticed in general with a lot of leather shoes and that a lot of companies will have some kind of ventilation or holes to help with that breathability. So this is something that I've personally had an issue with to some degree with all leather shoes, but these ones are particularly bad. 
This is where I think it's helpful to compare to a similar shoe so that you can see the differences. I bought the M Jemmy sneakers a year ago when I was planning a trip to Italy. This was my first trip to Europe and I absolutely knew that the Veas were not going to cut it. I was planning for a lot of walking, a lot of long days, and I knew that I needed something else. I ended up paying about $200 versus the Veyas, which are 150. The M Jemmys have a really soft sole and were comfortable from day one. I didn't have to do any breaking in, they just came ready to go. The leather is extremely soft and does have a little bit of texture versus the M Jemmys, which are completely smooth. You can see a little bit of creasing, but I don't mind that. You can see by comparison that they just have a lot more give, and if I really press them, they go in pretty far. That's something that I've definitely learned to look for. I am always going to check the flex from here on out, so very much a lesson learned. The tread on these also isn't great. It would be nice if there was a little bit more traction to them, but overall they are so much more comfortable. I can live with that. And since I've gotten these, I've worn these the majority of the time. I do want to show a side by side because the difference is just day and night. I'm really not trying to push the M Jemmys. This is just the most similar shoe that I own and can compare the Veyas to. First, let's take a look at the flexibility. The Veyas clearly don't have much give and the stiffer the back is, the more likely you are to get blisters. Same thing with the toe box. Your feet naturally flex as you walk, so this just isn't a great design. The Veyas are glued to the sole, which isn't terrible, but they will eventually come apart. Versus the M Jemmys, which are glued and hand sewn for extra durability. Again, as your foot flexes, there are naturally going to be areas that become more prone to separating. So having shoes that are sewn on top of being glued is going to really help keep them together. The tongue is cut straight and the leather is very stiff, which means that you're going to be very prone to getting blisters and having the tongue dug in. Versus something that is a soft leather and padded, that will be a very different experience. Taking a look at the inside, the footbeds are very different. The M Jemmys go to the edges, they're padded and they have perforation, which is going to really help with that breathability. The Veyas have zero give, no ventilation, and the soles are noticeably heavier. I know it sounds like I am just hating on Veyas, but believe me, I tried so hard to like these. There's a reason that I wore them time after time after time. I kept trying to break them in and just hoping that it would get better and it just didn't. I know that they're incredibly popular, I'm just, genuinely confused. I don't understand the hype and I wish that they were better. I love the look of them. They are still absolutely perfect as far as my style goes. They fit my wardrobe perfectly aesthetic wise, but they just don't make sense. They're just not comfortable. I don't know what in the emperor's new clothes kind of mentality is going on here, but I still hear so many people raving about how comfortable and amazing and high quality they are and they just don't get it. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know if I got a completely different shoe than everybody else in the world or what is going on here, but it's very odd. At the end of the day, yes, I probably will still continue to wear them from time to time as long as I'm not walking very far, but the majority of the time I reach for my M Jemmys. I definitely wouldn't rebuy them and I might even resell them at some point. There are just so many better shoes out there for around the same price range or shoes that are a little bit more expensive but exponentially higher quality. I have heard that the Campos are more comfortable but I have a bit of a bad taste in my mouth just based off of how many people have talked about the S-bars being comfortable and they're absolutely not. I don't know how much I can believe the Campos are going to be much better. I don't even think it's worth wasting any more money on Vea trying to experiment with their shoes anymore especially when I already have a replacement that is so much better. So are Veyas cute? Yes. Do they match everything? Absolutely, it's a white shoe. Do I think they're worth $150? Personally, I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. So let me know if you feel differently. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.